Good evening, good evening. Welcome, welcome to our Tuesday time in the Word. Come on, let's everybody just give God a praise. And in doing so, let's get used to using our chat box tonight. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and just say praise God for Bible study. Put that in the chat box. Praise God to learn from the word of God tonight. Put that in the chat box. Give God praise. Watch this in advance for what's about to take place in our time in his word tonight. I want to greet all of the United family, all of our friends and guests who are sharing with us tonight. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, it's been uh, a blessed day. God has seen us through the days, through the hours of this day, led us to this moment that we can come together uh, and just share uh, in his word, share in virtual fellowship, uh, to have a blessed time in him and for him. Amen. And so I I'm just grateful for this opportunity. And, you know, it, it, since I, I just believe that God's going to move and bless, I, I think it's only, only good for all of us who, who, who believe it as well. Maybe send a text to a friend, uh, host a watch party. Amen. Let somebody know that we're about ready to study the word of God tonight and that God has a blessing in the word for them. Amen. God has a blessing through our fellowship tonight, one with another. And so, yeah, reach out, be a witness. Amen. You never know what you're reaching out and what your witness might do in someone else's life and might lead someone uh, to to want a walk of faith in Jesus Christ, amen, might encourage and strengthen somebody's walk of faith in Jesus Christ, amen. So reach out, reach out and encourage someone to be a part of our Tuesday time in the Word tonight, our Bible study on tonight, amen, amen. Praise God, praise God. I, I, I want to pause uh, at the very outset now, I just, I just want to ask God to bless our time together. Bless all that we're going to say and share and, and do tonight. Uh, let, let's ask God. Let's ask God. Would you join me in a word of prayer tonight? Amen. God, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for, for seeing us through the hours of the day and leading us to this very moment in which we can come together and share, uh, share one with another virtually, uh, share uh, with you, share in your word. Uh, thank you, O oh God, for this uh, time that you are affording us to have. You, you have kept us and now led us uh, into this very moment of ministry. Uh, we pray, dear Lord, that you would use it Amen, that we would receive what you would have us to receive uh, to the end that everything that is said and everything that is done would bring you glory. We thank you and give you praise. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and together we say amen, amen, amen. It's going to be a blessed time tonight. It's going to be a blessed time tonight. And speaking of blessed time, uh, ladies, ladies, all the ladies, let all the ladies, amen, uh, from all stages in life, ladies from all ages, amen, all stages and ages. Listen, uh, the first Wednesday in February, the Unstoppable Sisters Book Circle is gathering virtually. A Zoom is going to go forth. Uh, the Book Circle is, is going to be uh, speaking on uh, Colliding with Destiny. That's the book 
that's been written by Sarah Jakes. Amen. And so we're asking all of the ladies, acquire that text, acquire that book, Colliding with Destiny by Sarah Jakes. Amen. Uh, Reverend Yelva Jones is going to be facilitating uh, this wonderful time of sharing of all of our sisters, again, from all stages and all ages. And uh, uh, we'd like for you to be a part of that. That's the first Wednesday in February. And a, um, the Zoom link for this fellowship is going to be sent to everyone who's on our email list. Amen. If you want to be a part of this wonderful time of sharing among the sisters of faith, amen, uh, sharing in this book circle, uh, talking about colliding with destiny and, and pulling the gems and, and the revelation that's going to come from those conversations. If you want to be a part of it, uh, be sure that you are on our email list. Amen. For those of you who are, you're going to get the Zoom link for the access to the fellowship. And if you want to be a part, here's all you need to do. Just email us. Our email address uh, for this information is communications, with an S, communications, at United BC, B is in Baptist, C is in church, unitedbc.org. Email us, let us know you like to have the Zoom link for the book circle, amen, and we will get that information to you. And we want all of the sisters to know that please, by all means, pass on, pass on uh, this information. When you get the Zoom link, pass it on to your friends. Amen. Uh, we want to blow up that Zoom platform on that Wednesday evening uh, and just have a great time for all of the ladies gathering. I just believe it's going to be a wonderful time for all of the women who will share. Amen. Again, that's any age, any stage in life, we know it's going to bless. Uh, so pass it on to your co-workers, to your friends, to your family, and we want all of the ladies to be a part, <clears throat> excuse me, of the Unstoppable Sisters Book Circle. Amen. That's the first Wednesday in February. First Wednesday in February. February. Amen. 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 It's going to be a great time in the Lord. Uh, as we are uh, drawing closer to the taught word tonight, uh, I'd ask that you'd consider as we share now in the worship of God through giving, uh, that you would share. Amen. Uh, those of you, your tithe, uh, those of you, your offering, amen, your sacrificial gift, your love gift, amen. We use, many of you know, Givelify and Cash App, and so those are our electronic platforms, and we ask that you would now go to those platforms, amen, whichever one you choose to use, would you set, amen, your offering, getting ready to send it, Amen. As your act of worship tonight, your offering tonight, would you get it all set, all prepared? I want to pray over your offering, over this act of worship that we all are about to share in right now. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Get it all set. Get it all ready. The Lord blesses. Yes, he blesses as we show him that we love him, that we trust him, that we see him as our source, uh, that we believe in his promise of provisions. Amen. Uh, when he realizes that we're faithful over a few things, <laughs> amen, he in turn blesses us with more. And so please prepare that offering. Prepare it. Amen. Prepare that offering. Get ready to press send. And I now like to ask God to bless you and bless all who are now sharing. God, in the name of Jesus, 
in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we, we give as an act of worship. Uh, we give to express to you that we do love you, that we do trust you, that we see you as our Jehovah Jireh, uh, that you are the Lord God who does provide. God, pr bless in the name of Jesus the tithe and the tither. Bless the offering. Bless the one sharing it, giving it unto you and for your glory. Oh God, bless the one who is going out and giving uh, as a sacrificial gift tonight. Bless them in Jesus' name. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, bless this offering, this time of giving. Use it for your glory. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and together we say, Amen. 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 God bless you. Press in. Amen. Just go ahead. Press in. Press in as you offer that unto the Lord. Amen. You're pressing sin and you're believing God. Amen. You're showing God you love him. You're showing God you're trusting and you're trusting in his provisions and in his blessings. Amen. Thank you so very much for your love, your support, and for your act of faith that you just demonstrated. Amen. Amen. Well, it's time. It's time for us to get to the Word of God. It's time for us to get to the Word of God. Amen. If you're ready, if you're ready, say, I'm ready, I'm ready. Amen. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Put it in the chat box right now and just say, Holy Spirit, teach me. Amen. Amen. Put that in the chat box. Holy Spirit, teach me. Amen. Amen. Our hearts are ready, Lord. Our minds are ready. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, teach us tonight. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you got your Bible. I hope you got your Bible. I don't want to get started unless you got it. You got it. Got your Bible. All right. Put it in the chat box. Tell, tell, tell me. Tell me. I'm going to look at it later. Pastor, I got my Bible. I'm all set to go. Amen. Got your Bible. Got your note taken. Amen. Uh, materials. Praise God. Please feel free to share uh, moments when you're inspired, uh, moments when there's a revelation, moments there where you feel God is blessing you to share, amen. Please engage throughout our time of sharing in the chat box tonight. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, uh, I want to get started. And let me start <clears throat> by saying how important how important it is to establish a foundation. How important it is to establish a foundation. You know, as we are reimagining uh, so that we can reset, so that we can reach as many as possible uh, for the cause of Christ, to come to Christ, uh, so that we can advance the kingdom of Christ. While all of that is what we're seeking to do. Uh, it's so important that we first and foremost establish, establish a firm foundation. A firm foundation. Amen. Amen. Let someone know it is key to have a firm foundation. Amen. A firm foundation. I, I, I will never forget... Um, when we were planning and and having our meetings to go over uh, the, the 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 building the vision of building a a new sanctuary and uh we got all engaged in it we we were meeting on a regular basis and and the drawings were you know they were exciting and and it was real exciting to know that that we were actually doing this and um, and while the Lord blessed and everything worked out so so well, 
Uh, I will never forget, I think the most memorable uh, aspect of that whole building process um, was the moment I'm watching uh, one day uh, the, the, all the trucks coming in and, and they're uh, taking dirt away. Uh, they're, they're digging and, and digging and digging and, and they're creating what looks like what's going to be the foundation uh, for the building. And so they're digging and digging and digging. And, and then, he, here's what got me. Uh, that was, I'm watching trucks leave with all the dirt that they didn't dug out. And then, uh, I, I'm watching trucks come in with dirt to put in. So I'm asking, why, why, why are we paying for this dirt? Why, why are we paying for this dirt? Uh, and before anything got really good and going, uh, that dirt had to come in. That dirt had to come in. And I was told that the purpose of that particular dirt was that it had to be a certain kind in order to handle the load of what we were building. Ah. In order to handle the load of what we were building, they had to make sure, watch this, that the foundation was corrected and could handle, could support the load that was coming. All right? And so, ladies and gentlemen, the foundation, the foundation is what supports what's built. That, that, that was my takeaway. How important a firm foundation is. Now, you got your Bibles, right? Got your Bibles. Matthew 16, 18. Matthew 16, 18. Many of you are familiar with the exchange that takes place in Matthew 16. It's between Jesus and Simon Barjona, who just uh, had a revelation and confessed publicly that Jesus is uh, the Christ and the Son of the living God. Uh, all the disciples have heard him as Jesus had raised the question, Who do you say I am? And Simon, the son of Jonah, says, Thou art the Christ, thou art the Son of the living God. Matthew 16, 18, Jesus is responding uh, to Simon Bar-Jonah. And he says, You are Peter. He says, You are Peter. And upon this rock, <laughs> I will build my church. Those are the words of Christ in Matthew 16 and 18. He says, you are Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church. So, to be sure tonight, I need you to get this. Jesus is the rock, all right? Peter, Peter, in this instance, became a piece of the rock through his confession. What's real interesting in this exchange is that Jesus says, watch this, there is Christ and there is his church. They're both in the text. All right? There's Christ and there's his church. He says, who do men say that I am? What does Peter say? He, Simon say, he says, thou art the Christ. Thou art the the Christ. So Simon says, of the one who's in front of him, thou art the Christ. Then Jesus says to Simon, well, you are Peter. Watch this. And upon this rock, I will build my church. Christ 
and his church are in this same narrative, in this same passage. Christ and his church. There is the Christ, and then there is his church. And I need you to catch this. When he says, Thou art Peter, the Greek Peter is Petros. Thou art Petros. Then he says, And upon this rock I'll build my church. Rock is not Petros. Rock is in the Greek here is Petra, Petros, P-E-T-R-O-S, Peter, Petros, Petra, P-E-T-R-A, rock. They are two different descriptive uh, words, if you will. Thou art Peter, Peter at this point, Thou art Petros, right? Refers to an unstable stone. An unstable stone. And upon this rock, rock Petra refers to this unmovable, huge mass of rock. So, Peter is actually, if you want to get a visual, Peter is like a pebble to a mountain. All right? Petros, Petra. Petros is like the pebble, the stone. Petra is the mountain. He says, you are, watch this, now this pebble, this stone, but upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Christ, the rock, is the foundation. Okay? The church is what he builds on the foundation. Turn, if you will, to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. There you find these words. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 3.11. The Lord's church, ladies and gentlemen, has everything to do with those who are confessed believers. It has everything to do with those who are committed followers of Jesus Christ. That would be his church, the ecclesia, the called out, the confessed believer, the committed follower. However, the foundation, right? The foundation is, 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 is totally different. He is the foundation. We who have confessed him, who are committed to him, watch this, represents the church. Don't miss this. So he's the church, he's the foundation, but he says what? I'm going to Build my church. All right. Need you to get that. So the confessed believer, the committed follower, makes up the church. Christ is the foundation. He says, upon this foundation, I'm going to build my church. I'm going to build the confessed believer. Build the committed follower. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, the church is supposed to be, according to the word of God, growing stronger all the time. 
The church is supposed to be growing stronger all the time because Jesus said, I'm going to build my church. I'm going to build my church. I'm going to make sure my church grows. I'm going to make sure my church grows stronger. So the confessed believer, the committed follower, Jesus is committed to growing and growing stronger. Jesus is the foundation. Go ahead and declare it. He is the foundation. He's the foundation to our faith. <clears throat> He's the foundation to the community of faith. Everything that we should do and prayerfully everything that we shall do should emanate from, should stem from, should grow from, should be built from the foundation that God has laid in Jesus Christ. Just as 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11 just stated. Now note, got to note this tonight. Jesus has spent his time, when we look at the Gospels, from Galilee all the way to Golgotha and back to Galilee again, doing the ministry of disciple making the ministry of disciple making okay as the gospels cover his life right they show us that he spent his life teaching those who were committed to following him and learning from his example building his church so all the time that went forth between his testing in the wilderness to the amazing revelation of his resurrection from the dead Jesus my brothers and sisters used those days used that time he used those moments of his life to do more than just speak in parables he used all that time to do more than just show his power to heal and deliver and perform miracles. The truth is, he spent every moment of his earthly ministry as a means to prepare his disciples to carry on the movement he started and the ministry he exposed to them. Three years, three years, he had a small circle of individuals and they came from all walks of life all right so that time from Galilee to Golgotha is three years and in those three years in those three years from the wilderness his baptism amen to the wilderness to Calvary and the tomb and that first Sunday in those three years and even beyond for those 40 extra days right my God guess what he did he made sure that that circle of individuals from all walks of life who were learning from him who were observing him he made sure he committed himself to making certain they were discipled that they were discipled now it is so important to get this tonight while so much attention in the Gospels in the story of Jesus Christ while so much attention is on his miracles all right so much of our attention is on his miracles we we can we can recall them we hope for them to happen in our lives. While so much attention is on his miracles, we need to look at where his attention was given. So much attention is on the miracles in the Bible, but his attention was on disciple making. 
Okay? The truth is, we see just how essential all this is. We see just how important all this is to Jesus, especially when we consider the Great Commission. All right? Now, the Great Commission, Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. That's where the Great Commission is located. All right? And it's important to note tonight that this is recorded, in, in, or I should say, when it's recorded. All right? It's recorded at the end, or as he's coming to the end, of his earthly ministry. Jesus has already performed the miracles, right? And uh, he's already uh, taught his parables. He's already suffered, bled, died, been buried, and raised from the dead. But now, when all of that had been done, let's look at what's on Jesus' mind. He's already done three years of disciple making. He's already done. He's already exposed them to the power he possesses, to the, the moral core that he has and the values of the kingdom that he displayed, his, his inseparable walk with the word of God and with God himself. He has given them all of that to experience. And now he's on the other side of being this resurrected person. And what's on his mind? He tells them in Matthew 28, he says, let me share with you this. This was on my mind. I've already showed you I got all power and all authority. But what's on my mind is what y'all are going to do and what I need y'all to do. I, I didn't show you everything I can do. I have done everything I, sh I, I was called to do for you. Now what's on my mind is what you need to do from this moment on. And he says to them, go and make disciples. Please, please you've got to see this. He doesn't say, go and expect miracles. <laughs> he doesn't say, go and start great and grand ministries. Here's what he says. Go and make disciples. My God. Go and make disciples disciples. Why? Because that's what he spent his time really doing. Yes. Yes. He was and is our sacrifice. Yes. He shed his blood to cleanse our sins and cleanse us from our sins and set us in right relationship with God the Father. But ladies and gentlemen, it was his disciple making that was so key to the kingdom. He would die for all, but now he would need all whom he died for to live for him, watch this, so that others would come to the understanding that Jesus is the way, he is the truth, he is the life, just like John 14 and 6 says. Jesus died for all so that all whom he died for would live for him so that others would come to the understanding that no one can go to the Father except by him. Okay, so with all of that being said tonight, while Jesus is the foundation, the great commission, Matthew 
28, 18 through 20, is how he intends to build his church. All right? So he's the foundation. He's who we look at. He's who we learn from. But the Great Commission is how he intends to build his church. All right? And so in essence tonight, what we must now do is take on his mission as ours. Turn, if you will, to John chapter 14. And look what it says in verse 12. John chapter 14, verse 12 says, Verily, I, t I tell you, or very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me, watch this, will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. Jesus doesn't say it's an option. <laughs> he doesn't say you might. He says if you believe in him, you will do the works he's been doing. If you believe in him, you're going to do even greater things than he's been doing. My God. Back to the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Right? He says, go now and make disciples. That's what I was doing. You're going to do what I was doing. Go make disciples. Just as I discipled you, I need you now to go and make disciples. Now that you are, believe in me. But there's something else we got to see. Note what Jesus says just before he ascends to heaven. It's right there in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Look what it says. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses. Again, no option. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. But here's what we got to look at. Verse 9. So keep reading. Verse 9 says, after he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid them from their sight. Okay? So now, put verse 9, juxtapose it, line it up side by side, Acts chapter 1, verse 9, with John 14 and 12. Right? John 14 and 12 says that you're going to do all the things I've been doing. You're going to do even greater than I've been doing. And watch this. Here's the caveat. Because I am going to the Father. What does verse 9 of Acts 1 say? It says he is now ascended and has gone back to the Father. So because, here's Jesus, listen to the word, because I'm going to my Father, or watch this, or when I go to the Father, you will begin to do greater than what you see me do. You will begin to do greater than what you see me do. We now are the church that is post-Calvary, post-resurrection, post-ascension. The Lord has gone back to the Father. John 14 and 12 says that those of us who believe in him will do the works he's done. 
and will do even greater than he's done. Watch this, because he's already gone back to the Father. It is with that said, as I wrap this up tonight, that we must imagine, just imagine what Jesus did. When we read all these wonderful stories, let's imagine what Jesus did. Watch this. And now believe that not only is anything possible, but ladies and gentlemen, we must consider the unthought of things. As, what they, as that they can be done now, the unthought. See, it's one thing to imagine, right? But now we must consider that what has never even been thought of can be done. Oh, I'm about to shout. I now circle you back to the text we looked at last week, Ephesians 3 and 20. Now unto him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work in us. Don't miss this. Please don't miss this. Unto him who's able to do. He's able to do. Right? immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. So when we ask or imagine, watch that, that's the limit of our thought. But since he's able to do beyond that, what he's telling us to do as his church, as he's building us, as he's growing us, watch this, he says, go ahead and don't shy away from what's never been done before, what's never been thought of before, hallelujah, because whatever hasn't been done or thought of being done, you can do it. It's possible according to the power, hallelujah, that is at work. Tonight, I lift all of this because I need you to see from the beginning of this teaching to the close of this teaching. Watch this. We started with the foundation. We close, watch this, with the possibilities. The endless possibilities of the church Jesus is building. Provided we maintain that he is our foundation, watch this, and the great commission we understand is how he plans to build his church and we adopt the great commission as our mission for living then eyes have not seen and ears have not heard and neither has it entered into our heart yet the great things God's got in store and so tonight before we even reset, we got to reimagine and tell ourselves, my God, God, you, you, you calling us to consider doing things that ain't even been thought of? Yes. Yes. But I'm going to grow you to that point. Hallelujah. As you are discipled in Christ. Hallelujah. And so I'm excited because we're about to embark upon a marvelous and wonderful season of discipleship in Jesus Christ where the line of our ancestors comes true. He walks with me and talks with me. Amen. And we walk with him and talk with him. And he's a daily part of our lives. And we start seeing him at work in every aspect of our lives. This is an exciting time. And I'm excited for all who are sharing tonight. I want to thank you. I got to wrap it here. I want to thank you for the time you've given tonight. I pray that the Holy Spirit took this teaching moment, shared it with, and, and sharing it with you, shined light in areas you needed light shined upon. 
I pray that through the teaching you're you're sensing that you're you're growing more strong or more committed or or more excited about your own discipleship in the Lord. And, and I, I pray that just by chance a friend of a friend tonight or somebody who logged on tonight or somebody just connected with us tonight and, and you were listening and you feel God leading you to give your life to him through Jesus Christ or simply you just want to be a part you want to be connected to this family of faith amen here's what I ask you to do I ask you to reach out to us at 410-342-0119. Give us a call. Amen. Or if you just want to send us an email, you can use that same email address I mentioned earlier, communications at unitedbc.org. Or you can just send us a direct message on Facebook. I want to thank you again, all of you, for sharing with us on this evening. Thank you so much very very much and, and should you be led to, you maybe didn't have the opportunity to share earlier now as we worship with our giving please uh, visit the giving applications we use that's givelify and cash app and and thank you for your support to this ministry god now we thank you for the time we shared this evening we thank you for your word we thank you for your holy spirit we thank you for the engagement we had one with another iron does sharpen iron and we thank you for for what went forth tonight bless now each and every one of us as we prepare to sign off oh god may we rest well tonight may we rest in you and be ready for the days and weeks and months and years you have ahead for us. And may the life we live, hallelujah, bring you glory. It is in Jesus' name that we pray, and together we say, amen. Amen. God bless you. Remember, make a difference. And why? Because God has made a difference in our lives. God bless you.